Let's pull up the chair uh, for. Uh, I think it's time for him. Yeah, they didn't have the new deal. They were out that one. Donnie, oh, you can't uh, go down. This is Aunt Janice. Hi, uh, this you? is uh, yes, Dick's we've oldest we've son. Met. Oh, have you met? We're, oh, I knew you met. I saw him come in through the. Matthew. Oh, Nate, you, I mean, Matthew, you, you can't crawl. Here, here, here. He can't crawl on this hey. stuff. Can I hold him? Sure, that'd be great. That would be great. Sure, Please bye. hold. Yeah. Is that a recording yeah. now? Nana. I said they used something. Did I say new? I must have said new. Got a percha. That's what they used in bobs instead of the wires. They use the stuff that they fill in. It goes down into the cavity and then they harden it. It's kind of a rubber. It's kind of it's kind of a rubber. It hardens hardens there. But uh, my land, I did one for Morris Longnecker, my classmate, in 1929. It's still going good. He said, you got a perch. I said, could you let them tell you it's anything new? Because it's not. So it's, <laughs> oh. It's been used a long time for us. Yeah, they the same thing. Yeah. Got yeah. They got away from using wires now. Oh. I told him, uh, yeah. I've seen x-rays people come into me that uh, uppers, that uh, the wires, silver wires going on through the end of the root up into the sinus. Um, <laughs> pull up the chair. What are you going to talk about the first? I hadn't seen it before. That thing in front of my eyes came. I hadn't seen it before that. Oh, yeah. Well, tell us about that time that you were just starting to talk about. Well, that was after, that was after we started school. Yes, I, 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 I was second year. You <laughs> before that, huh? Yes, I, you know, Dad told us that must be young Kim. Maybe Roger or Harry Armstrong. Well, I finished the first year of school at Webster City. And so I went and looked out the, the kitchen window. And I didn't realize, of course, that someday we'd be married. I tell you, that's, that's like Ben Franklin, uh, girl looking out, see him walking down the street in Philadelphia, uh, uh, right under his arm, and she peeked out the window and looked at him. And she very nice later. Uh. <laughs> so, what was your first impression, Aunt Janice? Now, let's hear about it. Well, <laughs> I don't know. It was such an impression. Uh. She first said, ugh. Uh. Yeah. I remember distinctly. Charles was not much of a knife skier. Uh, he just good then well, as he was now. Uh, well, that's true. Uh -huh. There's a prairie pond up north, east of Williamsburg, where we used to ice ski. And across the road from the prairie pond, there's a little section of those. And we just finished ice skating on the big prairie pond. And we were coming back down the road that separated the two ponds. We saw a young man across the road falling all over himself on ice cream. Well, but he never, he never skated anymore. Where was Charles? <laughs> but he really didn't fall through the ice because it probably wasn't any thicker than this under the water under the ice. Mm -hmm. and unfortunately, there are a lot of lily pads in the ice quite often. Yeah, that, well, that's, that's the reason that trip on the lily pads. Sure. <laughs> You'd be skating along and all of a sudden you'd hit one of these lily pads and fall head over heels. <laughs> Did you like to, uh, to ice skate Aunt Janice too? Well, I never, I don't think I ever ice skated more than three or four times. Oh, really? Uh, I haven't gotten the hang out of it yet. Yeah. <laughs> what about, I love that story about your doll, Janice Rosamond. Why don't you tell that story? Oh, that was the thing I wanted for Christmas more than anything. And I must have been about, uh, six or seven years old. And we'd gone down to Richmond and I saw this doll in the store and I thought it was like just the kind I wanted. And uh, but the, it was expensive. It was about seventeen or eighteen dollars even then. And uh, so I we went home and when Christmas came along uh, I got up to look to see what Santa Claus had brought me. And there stood this doll that I wanted so badly. And she had a card in her hand and she said, I am Janice Rosamond. <laughs> so that made my day. And I could... The other thing, Steve, do you remember when uh, we used to, uh, we hated for Christmas to be over so much. And we thought, oh, nothing to live for after Christmas is over. <laughs> and Mom and Dad would put 
let us hang our stockings behind the stove on New Year's Eve, too. <laughs> and they put out, usually it's a two and a half dollar gold piece in. Do you remember that? I don't remember that. What about you and my gold piece? Uh, I don't know. I don't want to give a line. I spent it. <laughs> I know all the time my folks, and Dad used to give me two and a half old pieces, that's all I have them. Oh, really? And they're worth quite a bit of money now. Oh, of course, now. That, you saved them? Sure, I did. That was great. Uh -oh. So, So when did you and Uncle Charles get serious? Well, it wasn't when you peeked out the window at me. No, no, I wasn't serious that day. Oh, <laughs> uh -huh. I expect it was probably two or three Three years later. We, we started going together when we were senior in school. So I'm not steady, not steady. Yeah. Yeah. I remember once I wanted to take her home for the ball, to the ball game or that was, basketball. That was the first date we had. First day I wanted to take her, take her home for the ball, That's the ball basketball game. She said no, she wanted to go home with her mother. <laughs> <laughs> I never lived that down. You know what? <laughs> She didn't know I, I didn't walk home, did you, you made up your mind that I was going home with your mother or not. So I did, and answered that, that he didn't ask me for a date for a long time, naturally. That's picture. And, uh, but then, toward the end of that year, was the year we were seniors, and, uh, we became, we didn't become serious at that time. Well, now, I'll tell you, it was, it was, the, it was the second year of high school, wasn't it, that they used to sit in front of me, was it? And uh, she sat in front of me. No, it was her junior, junior year. I sat behind her. You know, you like to sit like this, and I, I got my feet on her, give her a little squeeze on her feet. And, and, uh, uh, let her know that I was back there, you know. <laughs> it's your thing to... Teachers didn't see that, or they probably would have kicked you out. Of course, I did tie her sash to the desk once, too. This one's a cool one. I think this is a And I started to get up. And it jerked me back. Mommy. Someone's really smart. Oh, little guy. Well, those are two nice looking guys out there. Yeah. The lymphos, though. Me. So, um, Pop was telling about what about your dad when you you uh, you threw a rock at something. What happened? A, a chicken or something? Oh yes, uh, as most kids would do in those days, they threw rocks oh. once in a while. And I think she saw this. Dad saw it. I don't know. And there were some chickens, chickens in the old yard. I threw a rock at the group of chickens and I hit one of the chickens right in the head. <laughs> and the chicken flopped a couple times and fell over on the side. I thought I'd kill the chicken. <laughs> and Dad was really exasperated. He said, uh, now you've done it. He came running towards me. I thought he was going to give me a look. He said, never did give me a look. But uh, a few minutes later, uh, the chicken came to life, you know, it's coma. <laughs> <laughs> did your father ever spank you, Aunt Janice? No, I don't think he ever did. He always uh, he would growl or something, but then I don't think he ever probably never laid a hand on it. Yeah. I don't think Dad ever laid a hand on either of us. I don't think he ever did. No, I, but he, he started with that. If we were in the house, what would happen? He'd run over a couple chairs and knock over some furniture getting to us, and then he wouldn't look at us. <laughs> but he, like Sis said, he'd scare the daylights out of us by getting to us, and there's enough, <laughs> enough puppy right there. Oh. So Williamsburg was really a small town then. Yeah, well, it still is. It still is, right. Yeah, I don't know, it's much, much bigger now. Maybe one or two houses more built. The population when we were living there was 250, and I don't think it's probably over the Maybe 249. I don't mind uh -huh. many kids now, probably less. That's right. Mostly older people. That was a great place to grow up. Good place to be from. That's right. <laughs> Good place to visit. Why don't you put that down? Oh, because I'm, I'm videotaping, Nana. Oh. Yeah, let's see what other questions we can ask. Right there. One thing I remember just saying, 
after I graduated from Earlham, I didn't get a job you teaching school right away because it was joined yeah, the crisis. Mm -hmm. like and uh, I had an offer from someplace in <laughs> Hillsboro, Ohio. And uh, they wanted a teacher. Well, I thought they they thought I was ready to teach on math. And I didn't take on math even in, in uh, Earlham. So when I got down there, thinking that I was going to be teaching social sciences, that wasn't what they wanted. Oh, no. But they said if I would take the job, they'd let me practice in their kitchen. This was the county superintendent. And uh, I thought about it. I, me, I wanted their school so badly because it would cost quite a bit to send me an Earl. And I thought Mom and Dad would be disappointed if I didn't take it. But then, they said, oh, you sleep over. You sleep over. And I, I slept over. And the next morning, I was as sure as anything in the world that that wasn't the thing for me. I thought if I failed on the first job, that would be it. Mm -hmm. So I went to Cincinnati, Cincinnati and then caught the train to Williamsburg. And when I got down home, um, there wasn't anyone home. Of course, I knew where the key was, and I was exhausted because this place was so like it was uh, 200 miles from home, and it, it had been a nervous tension too. So I I went to bed because I don't. You and Dad and Mom had gone to Greensboro for an orchestra concert or something that Reed was playing, and I was sound asleep when they came home. And uh, I woke up, and there they stood around me. I felt like Goldilocks. <laughs> and uh, I told them what had happened, and I thought Dad especially would be disappointed. And he says, I'm glad you're home. I didn't want you to get down there anyway. Yeah. Reed, uh, maybe like, I know it's about your little Halloween trick with Williamsburg. Uh, yeah, I might do that. <laughs> this is worth listening to. Uh, <laughs> Halloween in Williamsburg is really something. Of course, the big thing was that uh, the kids would do is uh, turn over the outhouse. Uh. Uh, everyone in Williamsburg had an outhouse, and uh, quite often they'd turn it over. Uh, I might tell the story about how we fill out the milk wool and plug your pump and that's one. Well, I think about the, yeah, going down the alley too. The old lady. Oh yeah, I'll talk about that too. <laughs> <coughs> uh, Milt Willie uh, owned uh, quite a bit of land in Williamsburg. He uh, owned a sawmill. There uh, used to be a sawmill on his property. And we kids would play over there on the rubble, make shacks and so on. And one time, why I don't know, Milt ordered us off. And we were a little angry. decided we could even with him. He had a big pumpkin patch right next to our home. And in those days, there weren't many cars, but a lot of horses. And we went over there one night, and we plugged a lot of these pumpkins and put horse manure in them. And, and you know the pumpkins would rot. <coughs> but a friend of mine named Howard Duke, every time I go back to Indiana, and I was invite a group out to dinner, I always just bring up the subject of plugging those pumpkins. Howard Duke always embellishes the story by telling something that he knew that couldn't, that that couldn't happen really. So he would say that after we plugged those pumpkins, a couple weeks later, uh, Echo, uh, Milton Willie's daughter, was making pumpkin pie and they noticed this uh. smell from the pumpkins. You know, that couldn't be true because the pumpkins are right as soon as you put horse manure in them. And uh, another thing we did, too, that I might mention that uh, I told Charles and Sis several times, we used to play basketball in the loft of a barn in Williamsburg across the alley from the Meadows outhouse. And we have been known when Mrs. Meadows and her husband, their long years, 
compare to us. Came down there. Oh we didn't throw the rocks at the outhouse while they're in there. Well, that, <laughs> that a dirty trick. Yeah. But this particular day, I hadn't been up in the barn. Some of the, my friends had been up there playing. Mom had sent me up to Bill McNutt's grocery store to get some meat. Probably a quarter's worth. Probably a quarter's worth. No, that would be quite a bit of meat in those days. And I came out of Bill McNutt's store, and to go home, I had to pass in front of the men's home. There was an old barber shop no. between the no. meadows and the and go to that store. I got just in front of the barber shop and the villain met us, dashed out her front door and grabbed me by the shoulders and shook me like she was a dog. And I asked her what she was doing it for and she said, uh, well, you're always throwing rocks in this. And I guess I don't know, she probably called it something besides an outhouse. We were in there and I said, well, I haven't been up there. She said, you have in the past. So she yeah. kept shaking, shaking me for a while. We'll get rocked. <laughs> what are you going to do? Aren't you tired of holding that? So you know yeah, the life in Williamsburg wasn't uh, dull. very dull. You said it was? was No. It was an exciting place. I have to admit it isn't that way now. <laughs> Do you, do you have any of your old friends? Uh, do you see them, Aunt Janice? Yes, I. Uh, my best friend in. Um, well, first, my high school friend was uh, a little younger than I was. And she and I played on the basketball team. And uh, we were going to play in a tournament. And there was a uh, Selma. And they had uh, they had an epidemic of smallpox. Oh my goodness! In Williamsburg, and everyone was supposed to get vaccinated. But the coach of our basketball team says, "Why don't you wait until after the tournament? Because if you get a sore arm, you won't be able to play." And we didn't have any subs, so uh, as it happened. We lost the game in the tournament, and about two weeks later, we both had smallpox. Oh, oh no! Well, really, you, you'd have had it before, hadn't you? If, well, if I, I probably, when I was a kid, was considered what they now call a carrier, because it always seemed like when an epidemic was coming along, I'd get the disease first, like the smallpox, smallpox. and then everyone else would start getting it. Start to get it. So I had. The smallpox. They decided yeah. later that I had the smallpox. And you had gone to the basketball tournament. That's right. I'd gone to the basketball tournament and everything. And, uh, it seems to get worse. Uh, these like that seem to get worse as they go along. I think that's, that's right. And uh, then Sis moved down to the Snodgrasses and lived with uh, the Snodgrass family and was quarantined there. And I never was quarantined. Of course, I had a date with you when you were kind of taking down with it, Dennis, but I'd already been vaccinated about a year or two before. Is that right? I didn't know that. Yeah, so it didn't bother me. That was the year that we were seniors, and it was, I had to miss the next to the last week of school because I was old. That broke my heart. Yeah. Just to think, now smallpox is eliminated from the world. There is, there is no smallpox in the world. No more. Um, how many kids were in your class? It was a real small school, wasn't it? You can tell about that, Joe. Yeah, well, you were the, you started in. You know, well, we had. Uh, I didn't start there. The year that I was a freshman in high school, I think we had a big class. We had, we had six. Uh -huh. And uh, then the year that we were sophomores, Charles had moved to Williamsburg. But, uh, and so, and we had, we had four of that year. And then we had three in the third year of high school. In our class. In our Not class. And then in uh, the last year, we had four. Charles was president. I was secretary, I guess, or treasurer. I don't think we ever had any money on it. But, anyway. mm -hmm. but uh, we're the only ones left. Yeah. So we don't have to go to a high school reunion. High school reunion. We do. But we have our own reunion. We do. <laughs> but we do go to the alumni. 
course, we'd like for Reed to come, but he, when he comes, he gets the prize for the longest distance way. Oh, the longest distance, yeah. What do, what do you, um, what do you remember about your mother? Do you remember anything, some special things about your mom? Well, she was a guiding light in our lives. She was a, a wonderful mother. She, she died when she was 52. 52? She insisted that Louis Sitz and I uh, finish college. Matter of fact, before I passed away, and before uh, Mom passed away, uh, did she talk to you and Dad and Doge about making sure that I finished with the school lines? Oh, I'm sure she did. I, I feel sure that she did too. But Mom was one to uh, make sure that uh, both sisters and I went to college and graduated from college. Mm -hmm. That's the year she died. When she died. She died in 1933. And then you were married in September. September the 9th. September the 9th. And you, the day after Charles and I were married, we went to, uh, up to Wisconsin on our honeymoon. The World and, Fair. And uh, then uh, Steve was to leave the next day. Remember. And uh, Dad went up in the country and gathered goldenrod. You know what goldenrod is? It's a flower that blooms in. It's wild, and it blooms in uh, September, and it's beautiful. And Dad had gone up to get the flowers because our wedding was to be in uh, at home, in our home. And then Steve was to leave the next day for. Missouri to go to school of mines. And that was my second year. And that was, uh, I was very depressed because of that. I actually hated to see him leave. And it was like leaving home. Of course, I wanted to get married, certainly. So uh, Charles said, well, we all uh, and after we get back on the honeymoon, and Reed's in school. We'll take your dad and Doge down to Rolla and spend the weekend. And so that made it. Doge was our uh, cousin, really. Her, she was our uh, uh, cousin once removed. Yeah, cousin once removed. Her mother and my and our grandmother were sisters. And uh, my mother uh, was, well, she, she was, she had a stepmother that was very, very cool. And uh, the stepmother, then uh, her aunt took uh, mom and uh, let her live at their house because the stepmother was just too mean for you. Any uh -huh. words? Then Doge came along. She was about three when her mother died. And her mother was my mother's aunt. Anyway, uh, after her mother died, she was uh, raised by mom and dad. Her father paid for her clothing and board and so on. And so she was, well, I think that was, they, uh, she lived with mom and dad before Skeeter and I came along. So she was uh, very important in our lives. I doubt if either one of us would have made it through college if it had been for her help, financially and otherwise. So she was like a big sister to you? Yes. Oh, yes. People always want you to call her sister, they knew she wasn't, so they wanted to. They knew that, a, that a Steve and I were the only ones. 
she was um, a very fine person. She died in 19, the first day of January, 1958. Well, I was trying to recall what the band died. I was trying to recall the year that died. Dad died in 1960. I thought it was.